Hi, I'm Tim Tyler and this is a video about the critical path method in project management. The critical path method is a basic scheduling tool used by project managers. Not everyone is employed as a project manager, but some basic project management skills are frequently useful since most people often have some kind of project on the go, even if it's simply the project of managing their own lives. The critical path method is one of the most basic and important project management scheduling tools. However, it is just complex enough to not be obvious to people without instruction. To illustrate that, it wasn't invented until the 1950s. The method is useful on projects where there are benefits to reducing the total project duration. If the time to completion of the project is not something which is desirable to reduce, then the technique is not very helpful. However, the majority of projects do have substantial time-critical elements. The basic idea is as follows. Projects are divided up into tasks, each one of which has a known duration and a list of other tasks which it depends upon. In the simplest case, one task depending on another one means that it cannot be started until the other task has been completed. A scheduling diagram is then constructed, placing the tasks in a temporal order. Here is a diagram of one project to illustrate the idea. Here, the horizontal axis represents the passage of time. The project starts on the left and its goal is on the right. The vertical axis doesn't represent anything very much and merely serves to separate out tasks that are to be performed in parallel. The tasks are shown as coloured strips and the length of the strips indicates the duration of the task. Task dependencies are not shown. If you look at such a diagram, it can be seen that there are some tasks which are not time critical. Their start time can be varied without impacting the delivery date of the project. These tasks are described as having float, a reference to the total time available on either side of them. However, other tasks are time critical. Any delay in their completion results in a delay in the project's final delivery date. These tasks can be represented as forming a continuous path with no gaps in it, directly from the start of the project to its completion point. Usually, there is only one such path, and all the time-critical tasks lie along it. This path is known as the critical path, and it can be seen in this diagram. The critical path method is based around construction of a scheduling diagram and the identification of the critical path. It then usually attempts to shorten that path by various techniques. Once it has been identified, the critical path becomes the focus of the project manager's attention. Obstacles on the critical path are seen as undesirable and are sometimes known as log jams. Tasks which are not on the critical path are not so time critical. Delays there have little effect unless they are so extreme that they result in the task shifting onto the critical path. Next, here is a concrete example. Consider the task of making breakfast. Eggs need to be poached, toast needs to be grilled and buttered, water needs to be boiled and tea needs to be made. However, obviously, these tasks depend on one another. Eggs cannot be poached before they have been cracked. There is no point in buttering the bread before it has been toasted. Also, you only have one pair of hands, so tasks that involve more than just waiting around cannot easily be performed concurrently. The task scheduling diagram for this project initially looks something like this. The arrows indicate dependencies. Later tasks are dependent upon the completion of earlier ones. Next, a diagram showing the critical path. What can we see from this diagram? Poaching the eggs is on the critical path, while toasting the bread and boiling the water are not. According to the diagram, the first thing one should do in the kitchen should be cracking open the eggs. What if you are concerned about being late for work? Something like reducing the toasting time would be pointless, since the toasting time is not on the critical path. What about calling for your significant other? Two pairs of hands allow some of the tasks to be parallelised. In project management jargon, attempting to create greater parallelism is known as fast tracking. Slicing bed, bread and boiling the kettle simultaneously makes the result look like this. However, this intervention makes no difference to the overall project duration, and so you should probably let your other half rest in bed. The diagram makes clear that the poaching time is the limiting factor. Maybe you should consider fried eggs, or replacing the eggs entirely with yeast extract. Here is the original diagram again. And here is what the diagram looks like with fried eggs. Now, the time waiting for the eggs is no longer on the critical path, and the total project duration is reduced. 
Once fried eggs have been decided upon, calling for assistance starts to make sense. With two people available, the scheduling diagram now looks like this. The eggs have gone back on the critical path and the total project duration is now much reduced. Notice how changing one element on the critical path can sometimes cause a dramatic restructuring of the project and can impact on what needs to be done next. This breakfast example is a simple one, but it illustrates the basic principles. Next, there are a variety of techniques that can be used to shorten the critical path. One situation that often arises involves tasks which can be sped up by allocating more resources to them, for example by hiring more workers or by automating the tasks. Speeding up a task on the critical path by adding more resources to it is known as crashing the critical path in project management jargon. Resource allocation issues often lead to those tasks with float being drained of resources and the resources being allocated to tasks on the critical path, thereby shortening the overall project duration. The result tends to be a kind of resource balance between different paths on the project, with multiple paths approaching criticality. Another way to shorten the total project duration is removing tasks from the path completely. When that can be done, it often reduces the total project duration. Feasibility studies, extra features, excessive testing, all can be jettisoned sometimes without too many undesirable side effects. If dependencies between tasks can be reduced, then this may allow tasks to be performed with increased concurrency, again reducing the project duration. Reducing task dependencies is not always easy. You start by analysing why a task has the dependencies it does and asking if there is any possible way to reduce them. Sometimes a task interfaces to a previous one. In such cases it may be possible to construct an interface using scaffolding. Use this when performing the second task and then switch to interfacing to the first task when it becomes available. For example, consider a project involving constructing a tower with a spire. It initially seems that the spire task depends on the completion of the tower task, and a simple approach would be to construct the tower and then construct the spire on top of it. However, both builds are time consuming and there is a deadline to meet. So you might consider not waiting for the tower to be completed before constructing the spire. Perhaps the spire could be constructed on the ground next to the tower. That would shorten the spire construction time and allow it to be built concurrently with the tower. When both components are assembled, the spire can be lifted into place with a crane. In more complex projects, complications can arise which go beyond the simple critical path model. Task durations are often not known with certainty, and estimating them in order to reduce that uncertainty is itself a type of task. If uncertainty about task durations affects the critical path, and thus impacts what should be done next, then producing task duration estimates can often become a high priority activity. Resources do not appear in the basic critical path model, but limited resources, resource access constraints, and resource-oriented optimization occur frequently in real projects. As an example of a limited resource, imagine an important consulting firm has a big project scheduled in a month's time, and you need to make use of them before they get tied up with that. Another type of resource constraint arises when there are access problems for a resource. Imagine you have tasks A, B and C, all of which require the attention of a key worker, who can only do one thing at once. This results in limited scope for concurrency, making it more likely that these tasks will wind up on the critical path. Also, resources are often another optimization target. As well as wanting the product to complete rapidly, they are often also budget targets. Scheduling diagrams and critical path analysis are or oriented towards optimizing project duration, but they can allow for other optimization targets. Next, um, some issues about who the critical path method is oriented towards. Since the method employs visual, visualizing scheduling diagrams, it will appeal to those with good visuospatial reasoning skills. If you tend to think verbally, you may need to practice in order to master the technique. Like many project management tools, the critical path method concentrates on the needs of the project and treats people like any other limited resource. This suits the style of some project managers, but for others it seems to ignore the social aspects of management that they are most interested in. These people may find it difficult to develop an interest in the method. In summary, the critical path method is a useful project management technique for time-critical projects. It is useful even for small projects, and so is useful in day-to-day -day life. 
Without knowledge of the method, people often manage projects by prioritizing tasks and assigning priorities largely on the basis of unconscious calculations. The critical path method is a way of formalizing part of the normally unconscious process of setting task priorities. The method can be very useful. If you spend a little time exploring it, perhaps you will discover its advantages. Um, joy.